Good evening, Rando Mania. I am Dark Moon EX, bringing you another great adventure here in the Final Fantasy Summer Co-op Tournament 2019. I am joined in the booth by Wappy103. Wappy, how are you doing over there? Doing all right. Looking forward to this uh, Game 3 match. Uh, it's going to be hype. I don't know if I call it hype. Everything's hype. I hate, uh, bring, I hate bring that the hype. <laughs> I hate that word. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, it's going to be something then. It'll be good. Let's just go with good. We've got two great teams here. I believe this is game three for both of them at this point. Thunderous Recap versus the Trash Island Fire Department number zero. So, zero? I thought it was number nine. I think we may have the wrong Definitely character. number nine. <laughs> Definitely number nine. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully our tractor will get that fixed in a couple. I see that the timer has counted down. We've been released. They should be rolling soon. Right, there they are. <coughs> so we see over at Canaria Castle, we have Acardia Island with a tent, money, and a pro rate. Ooh, that's actually not bad. We got Ice 3, Cure, and Cure 4 at level 1. I think there was another good spell. Yeah, oh, that's... Ruse. 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 Oh, that's great for the fighter right there. That's, that's like, long term. Lovely uh, yeah, ice armor. Unfortunately, that armor. cure for is not going to be learnable. Mm, that sucks. Well, you can't have everything. Ice armor, opal armor. I saw uh, uh, ice sword, flame swords, and a gold bracelets are all for sale here. So if you have the cash and you're not finding the gear, which they should be able to, they're going to be able to get whatever they need for at least the mid game at this point. It looks like we've got some really expensive houses, but. At least we got heal pots here and, and a pro ring. It's a nice little I mean, starter it's, pack. It's, it's a good start for the crew right now. So if you haven't seen this before, we are playing co-op tournament right now. That means that Lord Fizzlebeef and Tarnan are working together. It's not that they're just playing the same C. It's that they are actually literally sharing their items. So when they get like a key item, with, such as the key or the canoe or any of those, when one of them gets it, it will upload to the shared server, and then the other person will get it. That's for all the key items. Now, stuff like swords and armor and the like that go with their standard inventory, that is not shared. But everything that they get that is uh, important to the game itself, that will be shared. And that's how they can explore in two different directions and do a bunch of stuff in this floor shuffle adventure and be able to find everything they need in a very quick manner. We've had seats that have been under an hour at this point due to the way the co-op works. So we've got Sharknado uh, as Temple of Fiends here. As Mono is first person to actually dive into a dungeon. And, and he resets almost out. Because at these levels, you're not going to kill much in that. No, no, no. Uh, he he pretty much got stuffed by a ghost right there and decided to bail out. Uh, Fizzle and uh, Tarnan both hit level 3. Um, Thunder's also level 3. We, dwarves, we've got the eye room, the spider room. I don't know why I called it eye. I'm weird. Spider Room's good. Uh, they have Ice 3, so there's a possibility they can kill some of the items. Uh, I want the, some of the monsters there when they're ready to start a early level grind. And there's plenty of treasure there, so there's a good chance that they will not only get key items, but good stuff to sell as well, to get their money up early. Well, we got Fast at level 2 over in Provoca. And Fizzle's going to give us a look at the pirates. Now, I do believe Unsafe Pirates are te is technically checked on, and these ones sit here to have Poison Touch, but uh, Ice 3 coming out almost immediately is going to take care of that danger. So, Fizzle and Thunderclaw both went over to the Provoca side, uh, and apparently a Rod is what they get. Meanwhile, we had Monochi go check the dwarf side, so we got a nice little split between the two of them, but then he needs to go pick up some more supplies for extra stuff that he can do. Looks like really cheap cabins, which is going to be a nice nice to see since we were short on save items before now. That's a boon. That's going to let them get a lot of exploration in a very short manner. Although I didn't see anyone pick any up. I thought I saw there were 46 gold. 46 gold is nice. I, well, it, it does in part depend upon how much money they have right now, because 1200 will get you a few, but you're at a, a premium right now for what you're going to buy as far as uh, spells and other th stuff. you you got to prioritize it's... what you're really needing. It looks like Thunder picked up a silver armor. Huh? 
Looks like Manochi liked the sound of the spells that were over there and has followed uh, in Thunderclaw's footsteps to go get his stuff from the spell shops. That fast apparently was quite the temptation there. And an Aegis Shield for Tarnan over in the uh, Seafoot there. Ooh, and a Red D uh, Trap Tile. With the Ice Threes, that's actually a pretty decent encounter as long as they don't roll too high. Uh, they live through two Ice Threes. That's gonna be too high to really yeah. get yourself going. Three. Three Ice Threes now. I think you reset out of this because you're not getting through it. Yeah, they're, they're high evade as well. Yep. Unfortunately. Well, they know where the Aegis Shield is. They can get that later. Uh, Matoya's just a dead-end dragon, so... Looks like our... All our progression's gonna be in... The I... Or... Wow, I really want to call it an eye room. So today, <laughs> it's an eye room. Well, <laughs> he's there. The eye does exist on that floor. That's gotta be why my brain's doing it. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I, I don't mind finding dead-end floors like the dragons at certain spots. It kind of feels bad finding it in Matoya so early when what you really want is for it to be behind one of the blocked areas, the cube block or the oxyale block, so you don't have to check it. I don't know. I, I think I would prefer it to be in a really long dungeon that you just so happen not to go to, but the other team did. Mm. That's the ideal case. Tarden found the crown here in this Cardia Island, so that's another nice check for them. They'll be able to go explore Astos. Now, if you're used to the standard game where you need the crown to get the ordeals, you don't have to worry about this flag set. Ordeals is already unlocked for all the explorers, but it does open up Astos whenever they do find that encounter. And it gets us closer to our uh, item threshold. 15 items and you get double or 100% more experience, so... It makes for a really lovely amount of experience you can get by the time you're in. Yeah, and it's actually 12 key items, 200%, uh, and it looks like uh, we're starting uh, off 12. with... 12, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, you're good. 4x experience plus 250 per monster, so that's a boodle of experience once you get up over that 12 key item threshold. You got a ribbon over in uh, the star room on Thundercloud screen. Those eyes are guarding some good stuff. But he hasn't fought one yet. <laughs> Sooner or later. They'll show up. Looks like the Gurmaduce is hit for a decent amount and immediately has to reset out of it. Well, I think that's just you don't have armor. Anytime you don't have armor, the Gurmaduces are going to tear you to shreds. Yeah, and it's not like you have the ideal spell for them. Ice 3 is decent, but you really want to fire 3 instead. Hey, there's an eye for the eye room. There you go. It has now officially earned its name. And the slime tile over there is not going to be helpful at the moment, but they should probably keep it keep it in the back of their mind. You really don't want to use ice on slimes. That, that's not going to work. Mm. Need that fire or nuke or fade. So yes, as you can probably already tell, everything here is greatly shuffled. All the entrances, all the floors, all mixed together. About the only thing as far as the actual map itself you're, that's going to be vanilla that, you're, that you'll be used to are the town locations. Those have not been mixed up yet. So we're mostly sticking to these opening areas right now. We haven't gotten people going very far afield out of Planaria yet. Not that, you know, they aren't getting plenty of treasure and other things to explore right here in this spider room. Looks like Manochi found a dice mummy, whiz mummy, birdie pack. They'll try and take that out before they take him out. It's a good experience if they can get it. And it looks like the mummies rolled low. Birds too. That's good. One ice three has taken them out. And then hopefully this other whiz mummy falls down soon. Oh, but stun touch on the whiz mummy. That's all. He's fought several of these manticores now. Looks like he's just getting some early levels to get get their team off the ground since we got to go through some tough floors. He's already a level 11. That's going to be... Smart. Yeah, Manochi just got up to level 8 off that Wiz Mummy pack, so that's, that's a nice amount of experience. It's good to be able to keep you alive through a good portion of the mid-game. 
get you to explore out further. So, Wappy, what are you looking forward to in this game as we start veering towards the mid-game already? Well, I mean, we, we gotta get the floater, and then gotta find... I know Ice 3 is nice, but, you know, for such mage-heavy parties that we've got, we're gonna need something a little more versatile. Like, Ice 3, we've already run into a whole bunch of enemies that don't... They just kind of shrug Ice 3 off, they don't care. So, if we're really gonna get 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 the move on them, I'm, I'm hoping for a sub-50 minute at some point. I think it's possible. We, we've, it's the right... we've been... We've been able to get to Topher at 45 minutes before. So I, I think it is within the realm of possibility. You just gotta mm -hmm. get a little bit of luck and a lot of energy on, I suppose. Yeah, it's the thing of with the right spell mix, with the right item mix, they could probably do it. Uh, it's just however it uh, shakes out. Uh, what spells are over at Elfland is going to be a good portion of that right there. If there's nuke or fade at, a, at an area that the most of these packs can get to it, then that's going to be a huge boon to these parties. So Mono picks up their crown. That'll be good. Both teams will have that on the board finally. So have a so question in chat. Yes, uh, both teams have been to Provoca. Uh, the Pirates had the Rod. And about the only spell I think we saw that was worthwhile was Fast. And it looks like these Gersharks aren't aren't uh, fooling around today. They're giving everybody the business. Seems like most of the floors that we're finding right now are high-end floors, Mirage and Sea Palace floors. Just about everything here is really just giving our people the business. They're going to need to find something much better to take out if they want to get their levels fast and uh, manage to earn up some of that gear. That said, as we know, there are Flame and Ice Swords and Flame and Ice Armor for sale over at Canaria. Get a little bit of gold together and they should be able to get their equipment up and get rolling pretty quickly. Yeah, I'm not thinking Pencils of anything like already. That level 13 that's gonna be huge especially with this long dungeon here considering what's going on right now it really does feel like you know one of these two teams is one of the two parties on the team is really just going for the levels while the other one is um more working on trying to get the exploration out of the way it's it's an interesting tactic um how it works out of course is the question and i think we've just found lich already And Fizzle just resets out, and looks like we left progression over in that Sharknado room. I don't think anybody looted the left side of that room. I believe both, or at least Fizzle, has looted the entirety of the dwarves. It was a deep dungeon there, honestly, all things considered. Plenty of good stuff yeah. that they managed to earn up there. The fact that it has a sky floor as well built into it means that there is plenty of experience to earn there along with. Yeah, Wizards with Stone Touch have been quite... They're a struggle. Wizards are always a struggle when you're this low level and you don't have Lit or Nuke or Fade. I mean, Ice 3... couple. Ice 3 will take care of them, but if they rolled any kind of HP, it's you're going to be using a lot of charges. Yeah, Ice 3 is great for a lot of stuff. It is the most powerful of the elemental spells, but it's an elemental spell, which means not everything is going to be weak to it. They really need to get, get, get a hold of like a Lit 3 or a Fire 3 at a minimum to help supplement, or ideally, as we said earlier, a Nuke or Fade would really seal the job for them. And there's simultaneous ships on stream behind the mummies that everybody was avoiding. 
Crazy Sid Ship Emporium. Buy one, get one free. Everyone's getting ships today. So let's all walk to our cor nearest Corneria dock and put them in the water. Thunderclaw's looking like he's in a bit of trouble right here. He's down to one Black Mage. Two of his other party members are stoned. And his Black Mage was down to 22 health there for a moment. It's getting him healed back up, but... I, I'm not so certain he's expecting to get out of here. Tarnin's gonna give us our first look at level 3 spells. We've got Lit 2 and Temper. And Cake. Not bad. Not the best. No. I mean, temper... Temper's... You're really happy to see, but... I mean, I wouldn't necessarily cake, complain I'm kind of happy having... to see. Yeah. And Life. Life's gonna be locked out for the Red Wizards. So mm. Tarnin's not gonna have that. That does hurt. I mean, I don't hate seeing, especially with the, what, the fact that life is locked out for them, I don't hate seeing temper on a shared spell loss level with a uh, level 2 spell like Lit 2. Lit 2 I'd probably pick up just to get that lit damage against item, the monsters that are weak to it, while we also see exit at level 4. And then, of course, when you don't need it anymore, then you can move on to something else. And we've got Lit 3 at the uh, level 4 Black Magic Shop. Yeah, why buy Lit 2 when you can just buy Lit 3? And a floater. Floater for sale. Oh. If I'm Tarnan, I'm saving my game, I'm buying that floater, and I'm waiting for my teammate to get it so I don't have to blow that 20,000 gold. Yeah, that's a nice thing about the co-op. As soon as it gets shared to the server and your partner has it, you can buy the item, wait until it's uh, up to the server, and then reset out and get your money back. The, the shop's a little broken when it comes to that. But with that floater, we're halfway to being able to get our airship. Because it's only open progression and not extended open, we are still needing that canoe before we can get to the airship. So the item's now synced, and they both got their floater. We're just a canoe away. And we got pro rings for sale. That's it's got to be something you got to keep in the back of your mind. Pro rings and opal shields. Again, it's, it's nice to know that there's a bit of endgame gear available. Opal armor in one shop, opal shields in another. In case you don't find the gear, or it's too hard to get out, or your partner finds it, you don't want to take a long for it. If you have the money to buy that gear, buy it, and they don't have to stress over it, and you can go do something else. Speeds the game up yeah, looks, a minute. Looks like Wall was also level 4, so... It's a nice mix. You know, if we if we don't find ribbons, it's at least an option. I don't didn't notice which slot it was in, if it's red wizard learnable or not. I'm seeing from uh, Max Plus Pi that Exit is uh, White Mage Red Wizard. So right now, Exit might not be on the uh, table for everyone. And Wall also getting confirmation is White Mage Red Mage. There we go. So that should be available. And apparently a vanilla Elfland castle that we were getting while I was looking at questions in the chat. As the, With the dragon. As Falconic FF was pointing out in the chat room, you can kind of think as the, of the co-op server as like an extra storage box for key items. It will keep a hold of all of them for you, so if you have to reset or do anything and you would technically lose a key item, the so server will get it right back to you again. All you gotta do is make sure that when you get a key item, you wait a couple seconds for it to upload, and then it's there for you as long as you need it. And we see at Elfland Castle is Bahamut. Our three little NPCs, Bahamut, Oon, and the Elf Nurse, are mixed up. And today, the Bahamut has decided to oversee the Sleeping Prince. So it looks like uh, T Trash Island Fire Department's going to split up here. Tarnan's going to finish this little subcontinent. And Fizzle's going to go check out Melmont. And it looks like Mono and Thunder's going to do about the same. I don't know, it looks like Bizzle's trying to sail over towards Crescent Lake area. I like this. It's, uh, it's a key item. incentivized location. Well, hopefully a key item. Oh, we got TNT uh, well, meanwhile, hanging out in the window room. Mm-hmm. Which is in Marsh Cave. And you are correct. It's not necessarily a key item on the stages, as we have a selection of loose uh, regular items that are included in the pool could be a Thor hammer or 
a white shirt or a mausoleum. And there's a few things that are in the pool that could show up there. Also bearing in mind that the magic that's on those items has been mixed up as well. That looks like uh, Northwest Castle is our good buddy, the Titan. So if we find the ribbon, maybe we'll we'll get something good out of there. And Life 2 and is also, level 5. It's also worth noting that because of the fact that the Titan's locations are mixed into the pool, you can find Titan at two very different spots and technically use him to teleport your way around the map a little if there's some spots that you need to explore that you wouldn't be able to get to normally without the airship. As uh, Thunder and Mono pick up their TNT. And meanwhile, Lord Fizzlebeef gets the Opal Cheerio from the Sages and resets out of it. Yeah, he reset out because he had saved way back hmm. uh, by Melmond. So now he can go check those other two entrances. I mean, I don't necessarily mind that. Once you get the airship, you can go and land by the Sages again and get the Cheerio. I mean, I might have decided to keep it and go continue exploring elsewhere because reasons, but I can understand the move. And I think I saw Oon at the Melmond area, so... Nope, that's the Elf Nurse. Elf Nurse is... got a Vorpal sighting. And Ice Armor. So we're gonna want the tail here pretty soon. That That's mm -hmm. gonna... That would be a big pickup, because we know where Bahamut is. We got a lot of wed, Red Wizard locked spells, so... I mean, especially if your Trash Island Fire Department didn't bring a White Mage, they're really going to need that tail to get some life spells, because they don't have any without it. Because you were saying you saw uh, Life 2 at the uh, level 5 shop? Yeah, Life 2 and Slot 2, which I think is Red Wizard only. I know yeah, the Red Mage. Oh, we've, we've found dwarves. And we got a Lit uh, Helmet and a Pure Hammer from the dwarves. Well, you know, dwarves are known for their craftsmanship. <laughs> and apparently their ironic sense of humor. So I'm thinking progression's going to be on the western side of the Melmond, either Titan East or Earth Cave at this point. We're kind of running out of places. Yes, yeah, they've already checked Astos. Well, with open progression, there's a few more places they can check, because there are some docks included, but not all the docks you'd expect from extended open. So there's got to be a place or two that they can check that they haven't gone to yet. Uh, well, they don't have Oxiel. They don't have Canoe, so really there's there's just those two, those last two entrances. Hmm. Uh, to be fair, they haven't actually checked all the treasure chests they have access to, though. There were a few monster block ones that they weren't able to get past, like the Sharknado room, for example. The uh, Sharknado room had the ship. They, they did okay. clear that. I think they've cleared everything to this point. Yeah, we got the herbs, so we can turn that in at Melmond and then walk to Elfland Castle, although it looks like Tarlin, Tarnan's heading his way over there to uh, get the actual item. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fizzle's doing it. Oh, wait, first that's half. not how that works. I'm stupid. <laughs> Ignore me. So no, Fizzle's gonna have to walk over there to turn that in. Yeah, because some turn-ins aren't shared. Like, uh, Slab Translation is a shared item, quote-unquote, but other ones, like <laughs> defeating Garland and saving Sarah, the person who defeats Garland and saves Sarah has to then go to Canaria Castle to actually find out what her item is. The other person doesn't automatically get that chance. Hey, that pure hammer, it sold for quite a bit of money. You don't you mean you don't want to beat the pure out of people? And the tail! Hey! Turn that right in. The tail! And Bahamut's just sitting there. I guess hey, he could have, you shop. know, made the Elf King, Elf Prince, uh, class change, but <laughs> no, he's just waiting to hang it off, <laughs> hand it over to somebody else. I just imagine Bahamut's like, I'm going to hide it here on this sleeping prince. No one will think to look for it here. <laughs> but that's 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 huge. It's not progression, mm -hmm. but uh, at least Trash Island Fire Department's got to breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief. Now they're going to get exit, going to have access to life too. Uh, it was almost a required item, and they can use that Vorpal, which is going to be huge. 
I mean, it's not the best at these levels, but once you get a few more hits on it, cast fast, it, it's, it's really going to do some damage. But that means somewhere here, that canoe still has to be lurking. Because we're really running out of places we can check at this point. Minochi, feels bad, found the phantom tile, and it's unrunnable. Ouch. Yeah, phantom, phantom always truck. feels bad. Like, the fact yep. that he's unrunnable is just rubbing salt in a wound. Yeah, because you're not going to get any experience for it, because he's worth nothing. And he hits like a truck, and apparently he had massive spells. That's just not fun. Well, he always hits like a truck, but yeah. Well, his script could have it so he's not actually hitting, he's just using dinky spells, but that wasn't how it was going this time. Even then, you know he's going to hit like a truck if he if he decides to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, harm two staff, which... That'd be useful against the phantom. Good. Gets you one more a source of damage against him. Today, the the light axe shall be played by the <laughs> by the heel staff. We're just gonna switch these around. No one will notice. It's, it's the same thing, right? Don't let, let's see if our runners notice. We've replaced our traditional light hammer or light axe with new Bulger's crystals. Let's see if they notice the difference. I don't think Harm 2 Stick uh, Phantom Grind is, is going to be a thing, since <laughs> you don't get experience from the Phantom. That's the worst idea! <laughs> okay, partner, you go do this. I've got a grind tile three hours later. Sweet, I'm level four. I'll be ready for Chaos another eight hours. Don't worry, you got this. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, progression's got to be in this Earth Cave. Well, we have Tia on now. That's two. two of the two of the fiends I, already. Yeah, Tia one. I don't know why I think that that's Tia two. So that's I I lied. Progression can't be there since it's just the Bridge of Destiny. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a nice amount of experience if you decide to fight these R Hydras before they like attack you. And we're gonna try Warmech at level fifteen. Let's let's see how that goes. With the mix of spells and weapons they have, this is... This is ballsy, all right. Well, they got temper, so if they can stay alive... I, well, that red mage didn't. Possible? It's not... I don't think it's gonna happen. Yeah, he, his stuff's going so fast, I can't even really see the damage output, but it's not a lot. I mean, the tempered one yeah. is getting doing... <laughs> he finally did over 100 damage with a hit there, but... And only got dead. one hit. Yeah. No. There's the adamant, so we may have to go back and visit the dwarves, and that's what Tarnan's turning around in. Although, as Min points out, Tarnan has the Vorpal, didn't equip it on their fighter because they were using the uh, ice swords from the look of it. So that might be part of the reason why they weren't really cranking up the damage they needed to. Well, at their levels, the Vorpal is probably not going to outdamage the Ice Sword. You just don't have enough hits. Like your your whole thing with the Vorpal is you need hits to because it it's it it really does work when it gets those critical hits. So the more chances you have to do them, the better the sword is. Right now, they got one hit on it. It's not going to. You got one shot at a crit. That's not great. They might have two. Yeah. I was trying to be encouraging. That's that's true. The only damage you're gonna do is on criticals. That that's a yeah. good point, Shadow. But really, you're just not gonna kill him. That's. Yeah, as Piercing Mountain was asking about the uh, various item magics, the item magic has to be based on spells they can use in combat. So lit. And... Fire and harm and all that is on the table, as is, like, wall and pier, which we saw. Uh, other spells, such as lights and, like, two and warp and exit, soft, those can't be used in combat, so they can't be assigned to a weapon. And there's our canoe, so we're going to be airborne here at the 30-minute mark. 
Oof, I missed where they got the adamant, the adamant, even. The adamant was in Titan East. Uh, I don't is. remember what the floor was. Ah, so Titan East was a dungeon. I kept hearing you say Titan, and I thought they'd actually found the Titan Tunnel. But, so I'm like, well, they need the ruby for that yet. But no, that makes perfect sense well, now. Well, they have found Titan. Titan's <laughs> hanging out in Northwest Castle today. But it, this is the, the joy normal of Titan shuffle. East entrance. <laughs> floor Shuffle messes with brain. <laughs> Looks like we found Bahamut hanging out in a vault. Well... Bahamut's normal lair has been moved to a volcano, so it's going to be it's, Dr. Oon. We've it will seen, be. Uh, elf, elf Doctor and uh, Bahamut, so yep, they don't have to slab. Mono's skipping Mirage 1. I'm not sure if I agree with that. That's a lot of chests. And I think it was to just guessing. to see what else was there, because this is a quick check to get into. Sun Sword's nice. Not fantastic. There's no dragon. It's nice. <laughs> Considering what they were working with, Sun Sword is a great upgrade. And another ribbon. That's that's, that's big. Lovely. Mm hmm That's gonna help them out tremendously. So now that we have that canoe, a lot of progress is open, a lot of new stuff is available to our party members. They're gonna be able to explore much more of this world with that airship, and I believe that's our third theme. And we've got Kraken, and yeah. I doubt Mono's going to fight him. Nope. Yeah, he's he nope's exiting out. out. He's so the only level nine with no Brad. That's, that's going to let them know. I mean, at this point, all they're really looking for is carry, a uh, key, and a loot, and they're going to have everything they need. Mono's going to take some time, write some notes. We've got Corneria Castle on Fizzle. I didn't see what this entrance was. There's the key. key. We also we also need to find the Temple of Fiends yet. Well, the asking you shall receive. We already have that key we needed. We're just looking for loot and carry. But that key does open up a number of checks that we couldn't do before. Everything here at Corneria Castle that we already just had as well as that Dwarf Treasury we found before, and the Elf Treasury, and a Confused Sword. So today um, the... Mute sh a Mute Shirt and a Confused Sword. I, I don't know if that means the sword is confused or what, <laughs> but... I have a feeling well, I, no one's going to use it. The sword thinks it's a wizard staff, and it's pretending to be one. Uh... But yeah, the second they find Carrie, they're going to be able to do mean strats against her with that Confuse. Mono's located the uh, rod lock. That's not really something we want to see, unless you have the rod, which they do. So. They got that from the pirates early on, going. so it's a good time for it. And we've got Sarda on Thunderclawed screen, and stuff's going a little too fast, and I actually don't know what entrance anyone's in at the moment. But there's a Mazmoon. Mazmoon. That's great. That means they have two endgame swords now, and they can pick and choose how they want to handle that. Sarda didn't move. Well, he saw everyone else was wandering around, and he decided it just wasn't worth his time. And Corneria Castle is Titan West, so... Still need to find that Temple of Fiends so we can see what the princess has, but we're making a lot of progress here. Getting a lot of progress in very short order all of a sudden. So still checking around, still looking for that loot. That loot, uh, as long as Carrie isn't behind a blocked area, that loot is the last thing we need technically for go mode. And with the amount of items that we found out there in shops, they have basically the equipment they need at this point. Ooh, wizards have frack. That's okay. They have the equipment at their disposal that they need to be able to finish this thing out. It's really just a matter of not getting wiped by wizards in the Earth Core. Looks like Tarnan's gonna give uh, Kraken a shot. Which, he's got decent levels, got some okay spells. He might be able to take this. 
Piercing Mountain was asking uh, what areas are not randomized as far as the standard uh, floor shuffle flags are concerned. <clears throat> there are a couple sections of the game that are not going to be randomized, like, floor to floor. Uh, ordeals is considered one package deal, so the second you find Castle Ordeals' entrance, like, in the interior of that floor, you have found all of Ordeals. It's a, it's a combined set. But the same goes for the bottom of the ice cave, since that's a two-floor combination that has to mix up back and forth together. Uh, and then all of Temple of Fiends is mixed somewhere as a single chunk. So it can be deep into a dungeon, but the second you find Garland and the entrance to that dungeon, you have found the entirety of Temple of Fiends. And we got, as you said, Tarnan up against Kraken right now. Kraken delivering a whackin' against that first fighter for 308, but doesn't take him down. But Spider comes back and swings for one damage. And Fizzle checks Marsh Lock and find the Defense Sword. Today it's been replaced by a uh, Fire Spell. I don't think anyone cast anything cast just Fire 1. That's really disappointing. I mean, if they'd gotten it much earlier in the game, it could have been useful, but a Fire 1 Sword this late is just not useful at all. Well... I think it's a better sword than he has to equip, so he's True. gonna throw it on a fighter and make his merry way about. And Kraken, however, is out We the found the fourth fiend, so nice. we just need to find Temple and Loot. Temple and Loot, that's all we're Temple down of to. Fiends is probably up here in Cardio with as many entrances as there are. Kraken has managed to deal the damage to three of the four. The hope is that he can get through with this Ice 3, and does! Takes out Kraken finally with one Red Mage, and gets like three levels for it, so his Red Mage is up to level 19, doesn't even bother healing, just runs, and is out with the first on the board at 36, I would say actually 35, uh, 58. Kraken is down for the Trash Island Fire Department number 9. And with that, goes back to Provoka to heal and revive. I, I think they've earned that at this point. Meanwhile, yes. Mono has found Mono has found Ordeals. Now, Ordeals is not incentivized, so that there's nothing guaranteed to be here. But considering how many loose key items there are still in the pool right now, there's a good chance they'll find something useful. Fizzle picks up the mess. I, I have a feeling Tarnum will be right back over there to talk to... Uh... Uh, sort of. The old man. Yep. Old man sort of. And after Th after Tarnan did that great battle to get themselves on the board for the first, Thunder is right behind, obviously not knowing that that's the case, uh, and is going to try and take out Carrie here. Carrie opens with a rub, which is going to be scary. Feeling out the damage right now, that Mosman coming in 7 hits for 331. Got an Ice 3 cast to follow, and another Ice 3, chip damage away at that. Carry is fairly well protected against spells, so any spells you cast are not going to do a whole lot of damage, but any damage against a level 1 fiend is usually worthwhile. Blizzard comes out and rocks parts of the party. But they, she can't have that much left, and yeah, that next Mosman hit for 488 is able to take her out. And in a second, Thunder is going to be on the board. At 37-49, the teams are back to being tied up again. Yeah, at this point, I would say Mono and, and Thunder are slightly ahead as they've seen more entrances, which is vital in this kind of flag set. You need to clear as much and as fast as possible until you, you know, are ready to go. So they they found the four fiends. Uh, I'm about or Fizzles now uh, checking Cardia, so they're gonna find their fourth fiend here in just a second. So they're just maybe a minute or so behind, and things could could change here. Really it's depends on who finds that loot. It's not enough to give a clear advantage one way or the other just yet. First first team to find the loot really is going to have the advantage in that regard. Of course, even then, we're still looking for Temple of Fiends after that. But 
right now they're they're within a hair of each other. So even like in here, like a couple bad battles in Temple of Fiends, not even like a wipe, but just taking overly long against a, a, a one pack or another could even this up in no time. And it looks like we have a loose bottle in Ordeal, so that's a good thing to find. That's one more turn in they can do, because Gaia has not moved, so it's easy enough for them to get to that and immediately find out what the fairy has for them. And in the chat, Falconic is throwing shade towards the Mazamun because Falconic really likes the Vorpal Sword instead. Falconic, of course, being one of the uh, founders of this particular tournament right here, a big proponent of the co-op tournament, and also a member of Team Vorpal, or as some of us like to call it in the community, Team Baby Sword. Hypes Nova asking in chat if the Maza is incentivized. Yes, it is. It's in the incentivized pool. I think the last three times I've seen it come up in one of the battles in this tournament, it uh, has been on a key item turn in. So you are more than likely going to find Maza in on someone from the split. So if the game really wants to make sure you you check everything so you can get that Maza. Or Maz Moon, or a Maza Nay, or whatever, however you want to it. It's a good sword. Especially on these flags, it's a good sword. And uh, Hypes does make a good point that the Maza Moon is a, a key turn in, so you're more than likely going to find it in this flag set. Whereas the Vorpal, being loose and not incentivized, may or may not show up at any particular time for you. And the Rod Block leads to a Cardi Island. Thanks, dragons. <laughs> And a Silver Dagger is the best behind there. Wow, that's... that's awful. So if you're just tuning in right now, we have found locations of all four of the Fiends. We have found the key. We are still looking for the loops and Temple of Fiends to be able to finish this out. And that does leave us wondering where those things are going to be. Are they going to be Oxiel blocked? Are they going to be Chime blocked? Are, are those things going to be lurking somewhere that we just haven't found yet? Because there's a few blocking key items we haven't gotten yet, as Manochi picks up his Mazamoon. So it's a question of where things are going to lay out and how things are going to happen as to who's going to be able to get through this first and be able to get on their way. Meanwhile, Tarnan has taken out Lich, and Lich was a blink you miss and kind of speed bump. Lich is down. Earth Crystal is lit. And they are now two up on the board. Hypes, that's the best uh, recap you're going to get. That's, that's all we got. <laughs> it was still better than the traditional uh, meme mono recap of stuff happened to go watch the vid. So I'll take a moment here to thank Randomania for hosting the entirety of this tournament. We appreciate all that they're doing for us behind the scenes. Meanwhile, if you haven't already, make sure to follow the four runners that we have on the screen right now. Manochi85, Thunderclaw, Tarnan, and Lord Fizzlebeef himself. And we also, of course, support the people here making this whole thing happen for you. Ray Fates Caleb is uh, doing our restreaming. We have myself, X, and Wappy103 on commentary. And then Fear is behind the scenes checking things off and tracking everything and making notes for us to know that Everything is going on and helping us so that we can keep track of all the ridiculousness here for this tournament. So continuing to explore out, Tarnan has found the Volcano Treasury. I don't think we've seen that before, so that's more good items for them to check. Meanwhile, it looks like Minochi is about to go do that bottle turn in, so we're going to find something new once again. Could be the loot. We're still waiting for that loot, and if it is the loot... That's going to be a huge move for them, because then that means the only thing they have to find is Topher. That said, there aren't that many places left to check, so Topher's got to be lurking here somewhere. No, oh, and Thundercloud was right ahead of Tarnan for that uh, armory check, so we're going to see a Zap Staff. Considering, considering some of the chaoses we've seen, that Zap Staff may come in very handy. I know the team that I battled in our first game managed to use that to kill Chaos before I was able to get to him. 
And it's it's a good item if you can use it, because it's one of those instant death spells Chaos is actually able to uh, be taken down with. Meanwhile, Lord Fizzlebeef takes out the third of our fiends. I believe. No, was that was that still Lich right there? No, that that must have been a uh, carry for them. So that's the third of the fiends for them, putting them up three to one with the fire fiend down. And we have found Garland. Minochi eighty five has found Garland. I miss where that was, but it's got to be around here in the Cardia area. So all we are looking for at this point is the loot. And then we'll have a go mode right now. And an ice one step. Oh, womp womp. Chime has been collected, though. And the ruby. So that's two more areas that we can explore. Loot could be lurking behind either of them. Thunderclaw has found the teleporter floor of Sky Palace. Meanwhile, Lord Fizzlebeef is trying to decide where to go and what to do. Might be waiting on his partner to go check some stuff off for them. They are just looking for that loot right now because they know where all the fiends are. So, Trash Island Fire Department skipped the Ordeal's entrance, but that's got the bottle. Or not the Ordeal's entrance, the actual Ordeal's dungeon. Ordeal's that has Castle, the bottle, yeah. which leads which leads to the chime, which leads to Topher. So, so absolutely they go back and, right there. and do that. Yep. So it looks like they're they're going to check. They're, they defeated uh, Garland, so they're going to check what Sarah has. Sarah has a stun shirt. Oh, thanks. Well, it's armor. It is armor. Throw that on somebody. Yeah, the best so far the best thing that we've managed to find is like the confused sword and like the zap staff. The the item magic has not been very kind this time around. Matarn is going exploring the sea split. Deals with the unrunnable Wiz Sahags. Meanwhile, Mono is gonna go uh, try his best against Warmech and Tiamat. See if we can get through this and put them a second on the board. Massive Main asking in chat where the Mosman was. That was on Old Man Sarda. Sarda once again proving that he is an essential check in all occasions. Mono is buffing his white mage instead of his knight. It's a bold strategy. I have a feeling it's because the Warmech was already blasting away on the night and doesn't expect him to live much longer. Nah, he did it before that. It's because the White Mage has Ruse. So ah. I get it. It's just, it's an, it's an interesting strategy. I like it. I mean, as long as Warmech decides only to blast out with physical damage, it's great. The second Warmech's like, I'm going to throw some nukes at you. Not so good. You can't, you can't Ruse yourself out of a nuke. Yeah, the Ice Warmech's 3, the Black Mages didn't like. So. Yep. Yeah. But doing 349 damage with that white mage. So, got him buffed enough. And down five goes Warmech. Five hits for 804 off a white mage. That's insane. We've got dragon armor and fizzles. And that white mage just He's found, he's found the murder. Stuff. Meanwhile, Tarnan has found Matoya, but I do not believe we have the crystal yet, so that's a check that's good to know, but they're not going to be able to actually finish it out just yet. Septimus making the valid point that of all the moves we've seen so far, the veteran move was knowing that the White Mage, buffed enough, could take out Warmech. And an opal armor there for Thunderclaw. And there's the crystal in the same dungeon that Matoya is. She's just too lazy to go upstairs and go get it. She's blind! She can't see the stairs! And that leads to the cube. Have we seen the cube block yet? I do not believe we have. Oh. Getting yes and no. I believe it's a no. So that's useful.
So right now, Mono is working on taking out Tiamat 1. Again, buffing the white mage. I think that's awesome. I mean, I guess after you see Hangry Canuck buff a uh, black mage to take out Carrie with a silver knife, anything is on the table. Waiting to see how much this white mage is going to crank out for. As Tiamat takes out the spider. Four hits for 325. That's not bad. That's it's getting up there. It's Tiamat 1, so they're not, so not going to have a lot of health, even with them being uh, clamped for 100 to 200%. And that does it. That white mage once again comes in in the clutch, takes out Tiamat, and that puts them two up on the board. 1,200 damage from that white mage. That was astounding. So the question from chat, who's in the lead? Uh, I would give the advantage right now to Thunderous Recap. They know where Temple of Fiends is. And unfortunately, Trash Island Fire Department skipped the dungeon that has the key item that will allow them to get to Mirage Tower, which is where it is. So Yeah, they have the knowledge and the key items they need, even though they don't have the loot yet. Uh, and despite the fact that they're actually one crystal down right now, uh, having taken out that Tiamat, having taken out the Warmack in front of it, having the key items they need to get into Topher, I'd say this probably gives them a good three to four minute advantage. I believe Mono at this point is going back to try and give Kraken a whack in a second time. Yep, there it is. There's the Kraken floor. This is going to tie up their game for them. Meanwhile, we've got Tarnan. Uh, he's located the ice dungeon, essentially, and trying to loot that, but we don't have warp, so he's got to take these chests the long way. And we found a loose slab on Fizzle and the third ribbon. So we're full up on ribbons at this point, as far as you can be in this game. That at least has to make them feel good in that regard. And, and the robot the has the loot. So now it's... I mean... Until until Thunder's recap decides to clear out Cardia Forest, it's kind of 50-50. One team's got the uh, Topher knowledge, one team's got the loot. So... It still, it still feels like Thunderous has the slight edge there just because they've actually gone through the dungeon that has the key item they need to do the full chain. It's just a matter of how long is it going to take before uh, TIFD decides they want to go back and do ordeals, if they even remember about it. That is the question. Looks like they're going to uh, turn the uh, slab in and actually walk to Lafayne. Always feels bad when you got to do that, but it's hard to turn down a, a key item turn in when you need you need the chime. Yeah, they don't know exactly what they're missing, but they have to suspect it's a key item that's blocking something for them, and that's what that's what's going to lead them as they decide to go for a nice meal at steak right here. Yeah, he's trying to freeze it. I, I don't think he understands how to cook things. Well, I've I've, I've seen certain like. Uh, Specialty chefs do a lot of, like, freezing cooking right there. I have never heard of freezing meat to make it better, though. That seems a little weird, but it's probably better for the meat than if you decided to nuke it or whatever. I think Tarnan just found the eye tile, because he's it, in an ice cave, and that's an eye. That's that's the so, frost tile uh, <coughs> right there that's been replaced by. The eye has decided he's had enough of the floater chest. He's going to go kick the frost wolves out, moving in down there, thinking no one will find him. And it doesn't appear that the eye has any health at this point. Uh, just about everything that he, everyone he has on his party is able to destroy him. While uh, Fizzlebeef apparently picked up the Oxiale from the Lufenish. Tarnan seems like they're going to do their grind here for a little while. They may be getting themselves ready to buff into Topher once they find it. While Fizzle finishes off the last places to check. Yeah, I think they're down to maybe one or two entrances to clear before they'll get back to uh, that... Uh... Ordeals check, so yeah. 
they're catch they may have already caught up they're they're definitely right on the heels of uh thunderous freak It's tied up, but they still do have that nasty Warmech and Tiamat to get through before they're going to be uh, back in the back back in control of this one. Well, that Warmech didn't look like it had a whole lot, and Tarnan's level twenty-five, so it's not going to be a problem. Always root for the robot chicken. I mean, I'll root for him, but. <laughs> Level 25 knights with uh, Massa and Vorpal are gonna tear him to shreds. Mmm, <laughs> delicious shredded chicken. I like where this is going. <laughs> they may barbecue him too, I don't know. Now, I just noticed this. I do believe that one of Minochi's characters is named after me, that or he knows someone else named Moon. I appreciate that. A little call out. So each of them has one of the two key items they're looking for. One of them knows where Topher is. Both of them are just one crystal away from having this finished out. And unfortunately right now, Fizzle is going and checking the what's going to be the Oxale block, which is not the correct direction to go right now. Do they have Oxale? They just got it. They got it from the uh, slab turn in at Lufenish. I missed that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Tracker is better able to keep up with this than both of, both of us are. So yeah, I was looking for the icon and mm -hmm. couldn't... didn't oh, see didn't it. So. They're a little different than they used to be from previous tournaments, so. And Mono's gonna, you know, probably wipe to this glitch. He... Oh, so difficult. This is the worst boss. I don't know why they keep him in the game. He is so hard to kill. And what boss are you talking about? Oh my god. How did he do it? Uh, so Fizzle's found, found a big a big floor and he's going to loot it all. And mm -hmm. It's going to take him. Unfortunately, that's, that's just time. They really... I don't know if they have it or not. I don't think they do at this point. It's unfortunate because they think they're doing the right play because they're following the key items, but not going through that. And I mean, I can't blame them necessarily for not doing ordeals because ordeals wasn't incentivized. No, There's not a lot of chess there in comparison to the other places, and it takes a long time to explore it. We just happen to know that not going in there was the wrong call to make. And on top of that, they didn't have warp, so I totally get it. Like, I, I hate do. doing ordeals without warp. It is part of the, this whole like situation we're in right now is part of the reason, though, that when I find a dungeon, I will do it. I will do it until it kills me enough times that it's just not worth going through, and then I'll come back later to do it again. Because you never want to be in this situation where you're like, this isn't worth doing, I'm just going to move on, I no reason to come back, and then find out that the key item you need is lurking in there, and you're just wasting time. Looks like Tarnan's done with his grind. I'm not sure what level he is, but... I'm sure he's got a lot of them. Like 28. So. Crabcake's asking where Crystal was. I can't remember the exact dungeon it was in, but it was uh, literally one floor away from where Matoya's dungeon ended up on the sea split, I believe. If she wasn't blind, she could have gone and grabbed it herself and saved us all the time. And we've got a lock gauntlet. Unfortunately, Locke has not been patched to a 100% hit right now. That's a fix that's in the beta version of the game, but we're playing on the regular C channel right now. So, unfortunately. Manochi, meanwhile, has found Mermaid Floor. We're getting a lot of questions about where items we're at. I'm going to go check in with our tracker and make sure we have the notes available so that I can give a good recap here. So the question right now is, where was the loot? And the loot was on the robot in the waterfall. 
You don't actually need crystal or anything else for that. You just need it to be able to find the robot and get to it. And he's in Cardia Forest. So really at this point, either of the teams could finish it off if they just pick the right area to go. And I'm guessing Thunder is going to do it now. So time is kind of running out here. We're going to need a hard tofer for Trash Island Fire Department to come back here. He's, I think it was this dungeon. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't remember him going through the, the Q block, but maybe I just missed that floor. Yeah, unfortunately, with floor shuffle the way it is, it's impossible to keep up with everything. We're, we're, we're lucky when we can, but it's just difficult sometimes. <laughs> of course, we're not playing, so hey, whatever, we don't have to keep up with it. And yes, uh, Hangry Canuck asked if this was game three. It is indeed. If you look in the center area over by where Sarah is on our layout, you can see that each of them have a lit orb right now. They are both one up right now and waiting to see who finishes this off and take the match. End the round. Yeah, so looks like Fizzle and Tarnan may have forgotten that they skipped ordeals as they're going back and just making sure they checked all these other chests. Um, Tarnan is at least going to try and take out the robot chicken right now so they can get their fourth orb on the board. But Thunder has found Waterfall finally. This is going to get them the progression they need to finish out this game. Yeah, meanwhile, time has run out as Mono is going to go wait to dive at level 18, it looked like, which is a bold move. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yes. Getting themselves a stake and wings platter right here. That seems to be fighting back just a little. Doesn't want to go down very easy. Beefy Wyvern right there, it's managed to survive three of those blasts so far. A fourth one takes it out, though. Meanwhile, Tarnan is at least still up with all their party members. As you said, it didn't take much for you to be able to get past that war mech. And now they're getting, like, level 30 across all their party members after that nice eye grind. Tarnan is well set for taking out Temple of Fiends just as soon as they figure out how to get to it. And Mono has entered at the pretty much the hour mark. 101 like mark, yeah. an hour and one minute. Yeah. Now, as you noted, he's level 18s across the board right here. This is low level for this this dungeon. It's going to be interesting to see just how much of a nasty or kitteny dungeon this could be. Either way, it's going to be it's going to be something for him to try. At least it's a good information die. Yeah, and he's got a pretty high level white mage, which is going to help. That is true, the white mage that took up the war mech on their own. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, that white mage has almost as much health as the fighter does. That is a tank mage at this point. As his party gets ambushed by gar gargoyles. How nice. So if you like what you see right here today, make sure you follow our runners, Minochi85, Lord Fizzledee, Thunderclaw, and Tarnan. And of course, follow Randomania as well. They're being so good to give us the support and let us host our whole tournament here. We really appreciate it. Manocho's, Minochi is on the Earth floor, getting some Gurmedusas. Hopefully they're not nasty Gurmedusas. We've seen enough of the deadly Gurmedus at this point. They apparently have no health, though, because uh, 47 Ice 3 took them out. And already his characters are getting up into the 20s. That was a good encounter to take, get, get his experience up. And we finally got the Ordeals play on Fizzle screen, so... They're gonna be in probably in the next two to three minutes, so if we get a wipe... Or two, I, I guess they're both gonna be in there. I guess we gotta count that as two wipes. If we get two wipes, we, we've got a race. They, they'll probably be entering right about the same time, so... Yeah, I'd put them about Here. five minutes behind, I'd say. Bearing in mind, of course, that they still have to do, like, the various turn-ins, too. So just finishing ordeals is enough. They then have to also go and talk to Matoya and get the chime from her. 
Not Matoya, uh, the fairy. Oh, right. Think... Bottles here, not crystal. My bad. So much information to keep up with. But yes, you're correct. Go talk to a tiny fairy after they get the bottles that they can get the chime from her. Everyone in chat telling Mono to put the Mazda Moon on his fighter, but the White Mage has been wielding it like a beast. Why would she stop now? I don't think Mono likes us. <laughs> I've noticed that he's letting us die over and over again. <laughs> Sending us a message. <laughs> Commentate well or else. I mean, at least he brought us back up to full. He spent the time to care for us in that regard. Now look, we're about to see Carrie too on one screen. His teammates on the Earth floor. He's got, I think, his teammate uh, is 24 across the board. So definitely much more tanky than he was coming in. But honestly, he's earned enough levels at this point that I don't think it's a major concern. And there's there's a chime the chime for Fizzle Beat. And I don't know why Tarnan's not going in, but must be going to get some spells or supplies. Need some heal potions. So yeah, we just need a Nasty Topher, and Trash Island probably will have this, because they are much higher level. Well, Carrie has definitely done a bunch of damage to these warriors. The fighter is on one knee with only 40 health left, and she's still kicking. But she's down, and that puts him two bosses into this whole, whole dungeon. Meanwhile, Fizzle has just found Temple of Fiends as well, and this is going to put him, honestly, about five minutes behind, like we said. Chat remark on the fact that Mono wasn't healing there for a little while. Mono's a madman. Mo Mono is the buzzsaw. Mono, Mono does what Mono does. Meanwhile, Thundercloud is now up to Lich, and Lich 2 is gone. And both of uh, the Trash Island Fire Department are now in the temple as well. They are probably about five or so floors behind. As Mono is now up against Kraken. And here's where the real fun begins. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we've got. And yeah, poison, Image uh, poison, poison damage comes out. That, out. Oh, that hurts that Black Mage. One of, the, one of those both blows Black Mage's stamps so he can start doing his tempering on his, red ma or his White Mage. But the white mage is the one getting queued up to do the damage. And I'm dead again. Oh, he and Kraken has cure four. I mean, it's nice to see it here and not on chaos, but ouch. So he's been buffing up. Ink's a free turn. That's not going to be anything to worry about. His white mage should be nice and rused now. And yeah, they're going to come out swinging at this point. Lit 2 is just chip damage. There's nothing to worry about for that white mage. White mage can shrug that off. Three hits for 88 damage from the fighter to help out. Oh, only one hit for 63. This appears to be a fairly high evade Kraken. And unfortunately, I don't know that they have the fast charges to spend. Yeah, just going to do some more tempering instead. Not getting a lot of damage out right now. But Kraken, of course, misses got... that roost up white mage. We got Lord Fizzlebeef already on Kraken, too. He is one of the faster Topher divers I've, I've seen. The guy Thunder just is magically is fast. suddenly yeah. through stuff. Yeah. So he's most of the way caught up, but that Kraken took a bit of time to take down. However, the white mage was able to do it with the help of the fighter. And they are both up, and all the party members are back and around again, and we are already immediately into Tiamat. And three hits for three damage is not going to get it done. No. Nope. So we've hopefully we're going to see some more damage here. Ouch. Uh, Tiamat says I don't I don't like Meridian. <laughs> and 
But Meridian's really high level, living. Yeah, comes out blasting at that point. Stop comes out. Is not able to do anything, Army though. Fizzle Beef's higher levels are showing as they are just flying through Temple of Fiends and trying to catch up. They're almost That's... a crack in two. They've taken a five minute deficit and cranked it to about a single minute at this point. And they are just not cranking out the damage right now. And Mono's fighter is taking a nap. Yep, that's He's had a rough guarding. day. Lore needed guarding. They didn't have a thief to do it, but three hits for 66 damage is not going to get this done. And now I'm taking a nap. I mean, I really like naps, so I get it. Wap got whapped. That's that's not fun. He's burning a lot of his th Ooh. temper charges. Ouch. Down to just the white mage. It's whole day and in three for this white mage. Thunder's white mage three That's He's down. Thunder's down to just the fighter and the white mage as well on Tia 2. This Tia 2's not messing around. But Thunder's at least doing some damage. Well, that white mage managed to take care of it once again. He was getting two, three, four hundred uh, Maza hits. That's all it needs. A few of those and Tia Mot isn't able to stand. Just needs to get through this rock goal encounter. And at this point, Mono is the first to reach Chaos with his beefy mecha white mage. It looks like looks like they're gonna burn off just about the last of their heal pots right here. And it's on to chaos. Going to uh, get his evasion stacks and his partner's just about to uh, pull chaos as well. We're gonna have Un dual chaoses and dual Tia 2s. Unfortunately, with all that they had to do, they are now down to their last bruise charge. Blizzard comes out and deals decent damage against the Black Mages. The rest of the party doesn't care. But they don't have a lot of evade at this point. Gonna have to start dipping into those Invis 2 charges, which is gonna delay them some, and gives Fizzle Beef and Tarnan a better chance of potentially catching up here. Meanwhile, of course, Thunder is also at Chaos. Got his own battle going on. If either of these are able to get it, Thunderous Recap is going to take this match. Tempering out there. Going off. Heels coming out on the other side. Gotta make sure you got your evades on one side and your buffs on the other for that fighter. Chaos comes out swinging against Loop on Thunderclaw. 800 damage knocks that one to the ground. Tarnan's about to pull Chaos. And fizzles through Tia too. We're gonna have quad Chaos action. Mono has stopped for some... Oh, okay, he was thinking, I think. Worried me there for a second that we lost the stream, but no, he's still going. Chaos has taken out two of the mages on Thunderclaw's side. Still buffing for the uh, the white mage up on Mono's side. Meanwhile, six hits from Thunder. Thunder comes out against Thunder. As Thunder is doing the more traditional fighter uh, Mazamu. Uh, 218 on that one, a cure two from the uh, white mage. My god, there is so much going on right now. Tarn is not doing a lot of damage against Chaos right now. Is there a boss? Oh, Thunder takes it! Thunder has finished it. GG's to Thunder at, I think, right about the 112.30 mark. Thunder has defeated Chaos, the second to get there, but the first to finish it. That was insane. Four chaoses at once. Wappy, have you ever seen something like that before? Well, I don't know that we've had a lot of races with four people in it to have four <laughs> chaoses at once. But that's, that is just insane right there. Oh yeah, there was this whole tournament where yeah. that's what we did. Yeah. I forgot. You know, the, the thing I won? That's right. <laughs> I think I remember that. <laughs> the Chaos Rush one? Yeah. That was pretty much non-stop four chaoses out at once. And we've got Jeez, Trash Island Fire department, department finishing with an hour 13 and 15 seconds versus Thunderous Recaps one hour 11 minutes and 58 seconds. So very, very close race. Unfortunately, both teams insane. can't win, so. Yeah, GG's to your team. Yep, GG, guys. Hey.
So, I, for the record, you got in there five minutes before they did, and basically finished off Chaos, I'd say, 45 seconds before they did. Wow. <laughs> what did you guys think of that seed right there? Ugh. The beginning was a nightmare. I hated it. Mono? What? My <laughs> white mage, carry. What do you mean? Look at my white <laughs> mage. That Swinging white mage... Oh my god, that white mage was a beast. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so so what inspired you to decide that your your muzzle moon was gonna go on the white mage and you were gonna buff it everywhere? Um it was uh, short kills on Womac. That was pretty much it. That was the plan. <laughs> <laughs> Cause Thunder, you went with the more traditional buffing the fighter play. Yeah, because my levels were balanced across my party. Everyone was like 25, 26, but Mono, I think, hit like 30 on his white mage, so made sense for him to go Massa. Well, it was just interesting to see because that was like, you, you planned it before you got to the, the war mech because your white mage had it on war mech, and then you just committed to it for the rest of the game. Yeah, it was committed because it's a hundred percent kill on Womack unless he cast Nuke. Because <laughs> I was level <laughs> sixteen, what do you expect me to do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't see the other team coming in here for comms, so they said one sec. Okay, so. cool, perfect. So was there anything you guys would have done differently in your seed, aside from, you know, maybe run two white mages you could both buff or something? I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe four black mages for that early uh, I couldn't kill... What was it? The worst mummies? For days. <laughs> I think it yeah. took me like four or five tries just to get that ship. Yeah, the wizards were haunting me all seed with Brax and all that stuff. It's like every dungeon I went to, they were there. And we've got, we were joined by Lord Fizzlebeef. Good game, Fizzle. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Uh, whoops, my bad. He is kind of <laughs> yeah, at the top the, of the list. Yeah, the major difference um, was you did not do ordeals. And they cost you. Based on multiple practices we had, we kind of decided as a team that ordeals was by and large optional because if the because if the teleport maze stinks then that's like minutes sunk on probably nothing and then i neglected to properly mark where it was as a thing that we had not done so when we were in the scramble to look for the bottle we looked in a lot of places that were not ordeals and that cost us i think the run well, as I said to the to Thunderous recap, they got into Temple of Fiends five minutes before you guys did, and it was, what, a 45-second difference by the end of it? Like, minute, minute and a half, yeah. Yeah. They got in five minutes before us? That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, they had, because they had ordeals early, they were able to make the play before you guys did, and they knew where everything was. It was just a matter of finishing it up and getting that loot for them. <laughs> yeah. Dang it. Yeah, my yeah. white mage was carrying this game. It's all my white mage. <laughs> <laughs> no, no jokes. <laughs> it was level thirty. Oh no! Man. Oh no! I believe. I believe. Because <laughs> uh, the only thing that had roots in my party for Warmack was the white mage. I just throw the Brazilian on there and just go with it for level sixteen. So nice. I end up at like twenty six or twenty nine at the end. I think it was twenty six for for the white mage. <laughs> Yeah, White Mage would have been good this seed because there were a lot of really nasty undead packs. Yep. Yep. And also that early Life 1 you would have had access to, you would have had access to Exit way earlier. This was this was a White Mage seed for sure. So when I laughed about your White Mage, I wasn't like downplaying it. No, this was a White Mage seed for sure. Yeah. I mean, at least we had early Tail kind of helping us along, but... Yeah, the Tail, the tail yeah. helped out a lot because then we got access to Exit in Life 2. Right. Yeah, I had problem getting the ship out early, though. Uh, couldn't get it out until, like, four or five tries. We yeah. kind of abandoned ship on the whole unrunnable tile thing, because, all we, cause, like, Ice 3s are not going to chew through, like, you know, 300% whiz mummies. So well, we kind of just that, went everywhere else first. Everywhere else but there. That, yeah. that, was, that was the only place I didn't check there. 
So I was like, yeah, we I eventually, see. yeah, we eventually looped back to that. And I just went in with um, three ice three casters and just chewed on them. And then when I got the boat, it's just like, all right, we got our thing. Reset out. We're done. We're, we're leaving. Goodbye. <laughs> exactly. I did the same. I didn't want to move after I got the ship. <laughs> uh -huh. I got to say my weapon loadout at the end of that game is about the best weapon loadout I've ever seen. I had uh, in order mm -hmm. X Cal Maza Sunsword Vorpal as my four equipped weapons. Oh, nice. I actually kind of reversed that. I found Vorpal first, then I turned in to get the Massa, and then I ended up finding Excal right before the loot. Nice, nice. Yeah, our, our mad dash to find the, uh, the chime. Was, yes. I mean, I'm sure you guys already covered it, but was a lot of minutes that clearly made a difference. It was a lot of minutes that we could have otherwise saved, but we'll just have to do better next time in the next yeah. tournament. I'm really sad that we don't get to that we don't get to co-op anymore. You guys, I've been saying this all week, and I'm, I'm not lying. I'm not like fluffing you guys. Um, you were the one team out of the fifteen. I was the most not wanting to face in round one. So good job. I'm not surprised that you won. I'm sad that you won, uh, but like, <laughs> go ahead and like you know go beat everyone. Unfortunately, you got to beat two more sets of teams before you can like go kill the game changers for us. All right? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? I think the game changer is gonna lose to his wife pretty soon. I mean, I think so too. But you know, if they Just make like, it, if they make it through, you're, the first opportunity of either of us to, to is in the finals. I mean, it's like a coin flip. I'll be there in chat with Mama Duck emotes. Maybe I don't know. I will also be spamming the Mama Duck emotes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, speaking of, we probably should like start wrapping this up and getting ready for the next match so that other people can come in and start organizing. So, do you guys have any final thoughts on this before we send it back to Randomania? Um, no, I just want to thank you guys for uh, restreaming Caleb and then uh, Dark Moon and uh, Wappy for the uh, commentating and then Theers for the uh, tracking. I would say you're welcome, but you killed me so many times during <laughs> that round. <laughs> <laughs> I, personally, it was my pleasure whether or not you let my Black Mage die or not. I was still glad to be here. That was such a great match. I want to thank Fizzle for just being the best damn co-op partner ever. So, thanks, man. I want to thank Tarnan for being the guy who's willing to just analyze everything. Because making the calls is easy when you have all the info to work off of. <laughs> yeah. And I just blame Mono for causing all the stress in this seed. I think right now you're the one person allowed to blame Mono. Indeed. Yep. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you, and that was a great match. Everyone in the chat and everyone watching afterwards, make sure to follow our runners. Wappy, do you want to take us out? Sure. Uh, I mean, you kind of covered it. Just, you know, stay tuned. We've got a couple more matches tonight, on both on Randomania 2, if I'm not mistaken. So tune in, come out, enjoy it. Have a good one. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you next time.